All right, welcome back to August Fury, the afternoon of the 30th. All right, we are, seems to be a good number for me this evening, we are three turns in on this game. Um, I had played two turns, or two and a half turns, before the Atlanta campaign arrived today. So I finished up the last half of the third turn. Okay, so as I was talking earlier about their strategies... 5th Corps, Army Potomac, 3rd Corps, Army of the Virginia, move from here, this way, to make their attack on the right of Jackson's line. And after listening to a lot of documentaries today, and of course all the reading I've done, they were completely oblivious to Longstreet sitting here, which I don't know how, because they can see him. Alright, well, doesn't matter now, because Reynolds, Reynolds was to move over here on Lewis Lane and defend, so they know they're there. And shots have already been exchanged. On a two-turn delay, the third corps of the Army of the Potomac was to assault Jackson's left. All right, all right. So all of those are being enacted on right now, and the ninth corps of the Army of the Potomac is still sitting here without orders, which I'm probably going to direct or or send orders to them. Pope's sitting right there anyhow. So, but the question is, is do I want Pope here? I mean, I'm sorry, Reno, do I want him here to keep these guys honest and not having, so that they don't support one attack or the other, or do I send Reno here to assist Hooker, or uh, Heinzelman? All right. Heinzelman's boys took some heavy losses, but they have wrecked this brigade sitting here, which was, uh, who was that? That was Greg's brigade. They are, they are wrecked. In one turn of combat, these guys have been destroyed. They're holding their ground, but they have been completely wrecked. Um, the Union over here, I would have thought this would have been worse on them. But if this turn, next turn, goes the way this last turn went, they're going to drive Jackson. It's right flank out of the uh, railroad cut. Now, is that going to matter too much? Because put it this way, I got a feeling a lot of orders are going to have to change here within this next uh, one hour. Because it's the 130 turn, and I have the orders for Longstreet to start his attack through Groveton starting at 130. So you're going to see this. Well, I guess I better swim over there, shouldn't I? Ah, why do I always do that thing the wrong way? So Longstreet's attack, this mass here, is going to start their attack through here. I'm sure they'll shove Reynolds aside, who actually, Reynolds, I've just listened to a documentary about that. He actually sent message back that there's about 6,000 men to his front. And Pope said, no, that's Porter's guys moving to destroy Jackson's right flank. <laughs> Porter wasn't in front of Reynolds. I don't know how the hell Pope thought that one up. I, some of the stories about early year Union commanders just amaze me. You know what? I keep thinking to myself, boy, if Lincoln would have grabbed Grant and brought him to the east right from the start, because he was always mean as a snake and aggressive, how things might have changed earlier on in the war. But anyhow, so Longstreet's attack is fixing to go in this path right here. So they're just going to, they'll bang into the side of this mess right here. I can't see how they can survive this. And I'm also thinking that Reno is going to have to hit this here because if he doesn't, if he goes here, these guys will turn and you'll have, you'll have an envelopment of these two cores from both sides. So, you know, actually the only reinforcements are a battery of two guns and a regiment for, that belong to Reynolds that are going to come on here later in the day. And of course their first order will be to move to their command. So we've already had, let's take a look over here at the, at the sheets. Let me get this thing up so you don't see it. Take a look at the sheets over here and see what we come up with. So the Union has taken, uh, let's see, those boys haven't been touched yet. But they've already taken 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 1,350 casualties, well, casualties and stragglers. And while the Confederates have a wrecked brigade, they haven't, they've taken about half of that. 
course, they're in the railroad cut, so they're getting a minus one column on every roll. Plus, every now and then they might get another bonus. So, this is how it is starting, all right? And, of course, once this attack starts, safe to say that Pope will have to give orders. To, we'll have to change these guys' orders over here. And that will take a little time. They have to, they have to continue on their orders or they get their orders get canceled um, before they can shift gears. I mean, I can't, I, we're gonna have to see what happens with Longstreet once he starts his attack into the side here. Okay, so like I was saying too in the previous one, I'm using, I'm facing at hex sides. So far, so good. Uh, the only thing that was terrible about it was I didn't turn Jackson's 4th Brigade or Tolliver's 4th Brigade to the right so he could fire into the flank there. Didn't do that, but Mahone's brigade from Anderson did fire into the flank, didn't do no damage, but he had a flank shot right there and he didn't do any damage. Um, artillery has been, at close range, has been pretty lethal. That's where a lot of the damage is coming from. All right, so we're three turns in. We're getting ready to start the 1330 turn, the 130 in the afternoon turn, and this is where it's probably going to start to get interesting for the, uh, well, for both sides, really. All right, so we're going to get on with that and we'll post back up three or four turns from now. All right, we'll talk to you all shortly.